The ministry has done its best to come up with uh, protocols and standard of operating procedures for management of waste, uh, uh, both at healthcare facilities, in public places, and also in the community. At uh, healthcare facilities, we are having the segregation of waste, and also we are having the color coded bins and the green liners, and also we have deployed on the medical waste microwave, which is able to effectively handle the waste. Uh, without the greenhouse gases that we are so much concerned about. So it's, it's a good way of managing those, those waste, considering that the, the levels of waste generation have gone up with the COVID-19. And it's like uh, when you talk about masks, those are medical waste. When you talk about uh, the gloves, those are medical waste. So you find that those waste are also being generated in the community. So in the community, we have advised, of course, we have advised the community members to be disposing this waste probably in the latrines and such. And then all the other waste that have generated uh, in some, some of those these public setups. Right now, to some extent, they are being considered as a, of course, a medical waste because COVID is everywhere. So we have been able to decentralize the waste management systems with these microwaves. We are looking at supporting each and every county at least to have a particular uh, one microwave so that we can do a pooling system so that all, all these uh, healthcare centers which are in those counties, in that in one particular county, can pull together and even the private the private uh, healthcare facilities, they can pull together and take their waste in that particular central place. We are also, we are just not talking about uh, one facility. That was just our entry point. So there are some counties we've actually been able to give two microwaves. So I believe we are moving forward. And also, of course, there are the incinerators. The only thing is that we need to make sure that they are in topmost form of performing so that we are, we are not contributing to the pollution of the environment. I've had a specific interest in that thing. And of course, uh, we have the Digital Solutions Fund. Just to speak, to speak about a few of the different transmissions that we've been able to deploy uh, at uh, GK, we have a robot, a robot that is able to give COVID messaging. It is uh, it does this infection, and basically it can do many that functions depending on how you set it up to what you set it up to do. Uh, we also have uh, digital applications because. If you remember when you were traveling to go outside the country, you had to fill your travel surveillance form, which is a hard copy. And of course, you know, COVID is a disease that it can be transmitted to contact. So we did as much as we could to ensure that we, we, we are contactless in the airport. And that's why we have deployed the Tenge. The Tenge is an application that is able, makes you able to submit your health status so that we are able to do contact tracing just in case. We are having some cases on board that way it's easy for us to do contact tracing. So you, you, you monitor you monitor for 14 days until the end of the, the probably incubation period. We also have the trusted travel, which also helps us to submit our COVID test results. You understand now every other country is asking for COVID tests, COVID tests, COVID tests. So our trusted travel is able to validate those tests. Because we have our labs, the accredited labs within Kenya, and those labs are, are uh, in that particular system. So the labs forward that uh, forward the results direct to the to the system, and therefore you given a travel code, and you are able to be cleared. And also we are able to clear the people who are coming in through, through the same same system. And then we also have uh, REX the regional electronic and cargo truck drivers uh, system which has been which has played a major role in the uh, enabling trade within our borders because we realized that when we closed the borders uh, of course trade had to go on not every country is self-sustaining so we had to get food we had to get goods into the country and we had to take them out in the country so now that way we had to support the truck drivers so they were able to enroll in this trade system where they post our, their results again in as well, and then they are validated at the borders, and then they are able to, to move. And then probably the other thing I'll talk about, uh, it's also the issue of the hand washing stations. 
that's something that we've been doing for a very long time. Mm -hmm. So now we have uh, hand washing sessions with us, and they're actually being uh, people are appreciating them and using them. Uh, before COVID-19, we need to know that uh, we are preparing for other things. We can make sure uh, that we, we are preparing for because we know that is when we had uh, Ebola in West Africa and also even as soon as you kind of deal out of the country. So we had those measures in place. As I had said that uh, we are preparing for Ebola, that is just one of uh, the disasters that are expected. I'm limiting myself in this case to the pandemics eh? as forms of disasters. So we have come up with response plans in place. Uh, we also have we are also looking at the uh, establishments of some institutes, for example, the public health institutes. And uh, we are also looking at uh, reviewing of the existing legislations, eh? like the CAP 42 that we have used it during this pandemic. We to understand that the last time it was reviewed, I think it was in around 2012. Eh? So you find there are some areas that need to be updated. Uh, because we realize that like, the penalties that are there once you know, once you're not able to comply with the law, the penalties do not make the person who is not compliant feel the pinch. So they're quite low, and even the method of the, the method of the enforcement, there's some sort of disconnect. So those are some of the things that we need. Uh, we have uh, been able to say that these are the gaps that we have seen, and this is what we, we should be able to do. We have done quite well. Considering uh, this is, uh, for example, t t going again to COVID, because that is what we're facing right now. This is a disease that we knew very little about, and really the world knew very, very little about as well. So I think we have been able to come up very fast, have our plans in place, review the SOPs and the, the, standard, the standard operation procedures, and also the protocols have been place protocols that have really, really helped us to be able to operate in a state of normalcy. Because if you remember like the first time when this disease came in, we closed the borders and all, we also almost closed the economy and any movement. Eh? So we were able to go back to normalcy and at the same time ensure that uh, the COVID has not taken so much toll on us. So again, we have been able to build institutions. Uh, if you remember, we started with uh, very few isolation. We actually started with one isolation center at, at KMH, which had a limited bed capacity. Right now, we have quite a number of isolation centers which are well equipped. We have been able also to increase manpower. Uh, we've also been able to basically sharpen our skills in matters of uh, in matters of disease prevention and control and also response. And we've also been able to establish partnerships with uh, other government agencies and as well intergovernmental inter, um, international agencies as well and also sharing information between countries. That has really, really grown during this time of COVID. The, the, the Ministry is uh, making efforts to move from uh, preventive health, and we have to understand that uh, most of the preventive health activities happen within the environment in which we live in, and uh, we are the people who determine whether we are going to have a safe, uh, a safe environment which in turn will give us healthy life. Uh, my final call will be to the Kenyan citizens because. It's us who determine the kind of an environment we will be living in. And uh, there's an integral relationship between the environment and human health. So if we are able to take care of the environment, the environment